Hello everyone, I'm Ian EFC and this is Blue Lion CV and today I'm bringing back a transfer daily video now. Before I get into the main stories, I need to just address what the transfer dailies are actually about now. I have been fortunate enough to get a lot of exclusive information on certain players, but if you look at the grand scheme of things, it's only been three or four stories. Now, it's not every time I do get information and it's not that every transfer daily video contains exclusive information. That's not the case. Usually in the thumbnails, you'll see a red box saying breaking news. That signifies that I do have something. It's not always like that and I don't pretend to always have exclusive things. Most of the times it's just me giving my opinions on the rumors of the day and the chances of the day. I'm trying to do some research to see that some of these reports are substantial and just giving opinions on it. So I hope you guys remember that. Now, moving on to the main stories and to start off with the first one, it looks like we're interested in Riyad Mahrez if you were to believe what Sky Bet are saying. Now, the odds of Mahrez leaving was at 10 to 1. Now it's actually at 2 to 1 and Chelsea are the most favorite team in regards to his signature. Now, I've been doing a lot of research to try and find out if there's any credibility behind it. There's not too much on the Maris thing, so I'm only gonna be giving my opinions on why I think this guy would make a lot of sense coming to Chelsea now. The first thing I need to address is he's left foot. And we've been crying out for a guy with a left foot who can cut inside from the right hand side. And Maris, he gets goals, he can assist, find a pass, incredible close control, can beat two or three men. And I think, you know, in conjunction with Hazard on the left, and Morata up front. Let's imagine it. Mares Hazard creating the havoc, creating space. Uh, you know, using that dribbling ability to really, you know, bring some creativity and unsettle opposition defenses. All that space they're creating is space for Morata to utilise because we know Morata loves making runs in behind and he's constantly moving. So I really think that front they would really complement each other. The alleged fee that Mares can go for at 35 million in this market today is quite outstanding and I'm surprised why teams like a Bayern Munich or, or Tottenham or, or other teams really haven't looked at him but you know that's their loss if it does happen it makes a lot of sense at the same time you know if he did come hypothetically you know the chances of Berg and Masunda even playing is remote and I'm starting to just accept that you know with how the club is at this moment in time young players won't ever really get a fair chance at all to get much game time now I've always been an advocate that if you can't give these guys game time, make sure you do the best for their careers. Get them the right clubs, let them leave. You know, don't make profit on them, let them leave so they can you know, really prosper in their careers. If anything, you can put the buyback clauses on them. So if they do perform the two years at a club, you can review that and bring them back. Real Madrid and Barcelona have been doing it for years successfully, even Bayern Munich as well. So that's something we should definitely be looking at. But anyway, moving on from the Mara story and moving on to Can Draver. Now, we know that it's been reported that Marina has to look for three players. Conte wants three more players for the squad. There's been a whole range of players we've been talking about. Drinkwater, Oxlade Chamberlain. But it looks like out of all the players are linked with him, there are many more I haven't even mentioned. It looks like Kandreva might be one of the most realistic possibilities at this moment in time. Now, it looks like Inter Milan are close to bringing in Cancelo. Yes, at the same time, I know that uh, yeah, they play different positions, but Inter Milan have been using wingbacks quite a bit too as well. But of course, if they're bringing him in, They've been, linked, they've been linked with Valde Cato as well and other players. They're thinking, what, he's 30 years old. If we can get 25 million for him, it's like, what, nearly 30 million euros. That could be a nice bit of business. Now, I'm thinking, in terms of Krendreva, we have to realise, of course, he's 30 years old. If he does sign, it's probably going to be a two-year contract. Now, he is just going to be a short-term option, but he's going to bring in some experience, you know, some European-class experience. Now, I'm thinking in terms of the squads, that is probably a very good, astute signing because he would be playing as a wing back. Do I think he'll necessarily replace Moses? I don't think so. But if anything, if Conte is looking at players like this, it's telling me that he wants to rotate the team much more, which, I th which I'll be happy with because, you know, he's known throughout his career for not really rotating and just really sticking with the first 11 that he constantly uses. And I think that, especially in the Premier League, it's not the most viable option to do that. So I'd be happy for players to be rotated because that means, you know, you get these guys in their optimal condition, which is the best thing. So them getting tired, especially when it's going to come to that Christmas period, early January, where there's a hell of games coming at players. And I think that would be the best thing. And at the same time, so, you know, healthy competition for places in the squad as well. And I think with a guy only being here for a year, 
realistically probably a year, two years max on this contract, I think it could make, you know, it could make some sense realistically. I think it could make some sense. Now, moving on to the next story, we've been linked with Toby Alderweireld now. <laughs> you just hear, hear me out. Basically, Alderweireld wants to double his contract at Spurs and just from hearing what I just said then, that just has to tell you what this is going to be about. Of course, his agent's trying to get a new contract at Spurs. You know, Spurs have a very regiment, strict, um, you know, situation when it comes to money players can get. At the same time, at this level now, with the amount of money in the Premier League especially, should Spurs really be so stingy with their wage budget? I don't think so, especially if you want to keep some of these guys. It looks like Aldo Vero, you know, of course he's like 26, 27. He's realising my career is going to be over soon. I need to make as much money as I can so when I retire, I can live comfortably. And, you know, it's natural. So I think this report's coming out. The agent's trying to put pressure, of course. This report comes out after the, um, no, it was coming out during the, um, you know, the game with Spurs. He's trying to put pressure on them so they can try and get that contract situation sorted for Alderweireld and put pressure. I'm sure there's going to be much more reports of other players putting pressure. I mean, Danny Rose did the same thing in his interview with uh, TalkSport not too long ago. He was saying that he feels he's, he's worth more. So to me already, that signified that there's going to be more players coming out trying to get much you know bigger contracts for themselves so fair enough is he going to come to Chelsea of course not I think this report's only coming out because you know let's be serious when we were looking for defenders clubs will make a short list of five ten you know how many players you know if they can't get your first choice you go for your second choice if you can't get the second choice go for the third etc etc and I think that Elder Vrad was just a player that we were looking at but I think him and his team are using that to their advantage to try and you know you know, help out of there right now. So I want to look into that. If anything, Van Dyke reports coming out are stating that the club are going to wait right to the end with Van Dyke to see what happens. Now, maybe I'm thinking if they see other clubs trying to bid for him, Chelsea might feel they might have to bid for him too, so they can't strengthen any of the other opposition teams in the league. That's how I see. If that did happen, that would tell me that maybe Aspila Quetta would be used as a wing back from then on. I wouldn't be used in central defence anymore because uh, Van Dijk would just take that position for himself, which could make sense. I mean, Van Dijk is a fantastic player. Before last season, when we were struggling to look for a defender and could a Bali thing was going on for ages, I kept saying, because I used to write a lot on the We Ain't Got No History, that blog spot, a fantastic blog spot, by the way, that we really should be looking at Van Dijk and I was saying things like you know within a year people are going to start realising that this guy is a world class defender because he's excellent of course we've got Luis who's just as good so I, I don't really feel we need him especially with Christensen and Zuma coming but at the same time maybe this means that there could be some defensive shuffles maybe some players might leave who knows in my honest opinion I think this moment in time we don't need to spend 50 million on a defender I think that's the last position that needs strengthening and like I said before in previous videos it is a case of diminishing returns you know there's only so much elite performance you can get from the from the money you're spending especially when defense is one of our strongest areas throughout the entire team now moving on to the other stories there was a photo of Cedric Suarez in London now honestly don't look into it of course Southampton's not too far from London. There's, you know, they don't have a game on today because they they finish playing. You know, players, they have wives, girlfriends, they have a life. Of course, I expect them to travel around. Who knows what he's in London for? Is it necessarily in terms of jealousy? There's a possibility. I don't know anything in regards to that. I just thought it was something interesting to know that he was in London. And the nature of football, just like those reports uh, last year when um, Riyad Mahrez's agent, for example, was speaking to Antonio Conte. It's just a part and parcel of how transactivity works in football today. So who knows what's happening behind the scenes. But anyway, moving on to the last two stories. Now, this is a story that I've been wanting to say in a few transfer dailies, but I haven't because, um, you know, I'm not going to lie you guys, sometimes I do get nervous in regards to stating stories that come from sources. I mean, I've got two really good ones. There's been a lot more that have been you know, really inconsistent, which I ignore. But this is a story that I've been hearing for the past three weeks, and it's in regards to Boga now. It seems that Boga will be going on loan to Hull City. Um, I'm starting to think it's a bit more realistic now. Him and Tomori will be leaving on there on loan. And not seeing Boga on the bench, 
against Spurs, you know, it, it kind of strengthened my point on that as well. Allegedly, Masunda was wanted by Hull City, but Conte made it clear that Masunda was going nowhere and that he was going to stay with the first team squad. If anything, am I happy about Berger potentially spending a year in a championship? I'm definitely not. People might talk about experience, this and that, but then it's not really a league for players like that to prosper. That's why you never see any players, you know, attack-minded, attacking playmaker type of players, you know, really leaving the championship and going to the Premier League teams because there's barely any at all. Because it's a type of league where you don't need those types of footballers to get promotion and so you know to get promoted. And um, yeah, it's just a case of Chelsea playing with these guys' careers a bit. It's like, you know, we've left him at the club for ages just so he can be another squad option and so we're not too short. But at the same time, the longer you leave it, the less viable options you're actually leaving for Boga. What if other teams are trying to go in for him? And at the same time, when you hear reports of other teams maybe not going for players because their wages are too high or the wage fee that they want is too much, or even they want to try and buy these players and they're priced out. You know, it gets to a point where I'll be really doing what's best for the young player. I really feel that maybe Boga should have left much earlier if he wasn't going to stay. This is what happened to him during the past two seasons when he went to Rennes and when he went to Granada. So if he did go to Hull City, I wouldn't be surprised because uh, their manager, Slutsky, was the ex-Russian manager. He was at Chelsea for a few months, you know, one of Roman Abramovich's cronies. So of course, he'd be working on deals, being able to bring in some Chelsea talent to, to help him, you know. That's how this stuff works in football. So it is unfortunate in case of Tomori, a low move like that would be decent for him. He's unlucky that in the Premier League, you can only have one loan from uh, from one club, which is quite annoying because you know if you could have loaned out two players from us, tomorrow he could have still been at Brighton. So that's unfortunate in that regards, but that's something to do with how the league works. But to end on the last story, there's been reports coming out that Lille want to sign Mitri Batshuayi for 36 million euros. Now, I don't know what to make of the story. I do know that Lille were trying to sign this guy on loan in January when he wasn't playing as much. At the same time, Mitchie's performances just aren't good enough. And like I keep saying, it's not that the guy is a bad player because he bangs in goals, headering, left foot, right foot, outside the box, inside the box. But the type of striker he is, he plays on the last line and it's all about finishing moves. He's not a striker that gets involved in the build-up. So of course, coming to Chelsea where he has to do that, doesn't suit him and of course because he's barely getting any game time he's not able to actually get used to what he has to do and really improve so it's a, it's a lose-lose situation in that regards and you can see his confidence is really coming down recently so maybe a loan move might be good uh, should Lil be an option if he was to leave on loan I hope that we go in for someone else ideally I know there's been reports of us being linked with other strikers like Lorente still even though he's out injured at the moment and um, you know Belotti I'm not even going to bother report on that bloody story because that was just something that came out from nowhere. If anything, if he did leave, I'm hoping he went to a European standard club so he could actually really improve. And I think that's what he really needs at this moment in time because him being the second choice option forever isn't really going to help his cause in becoming a, a future starter at Chelsea. Now, you guys, I'm going to end the Transfer Daily video here. Please like, comment and share. Follow me on Snapchat. I'm going to be bringing back the Snapchat Q&A soon. And follow me on Twitter. That's at NiniFC. Thank you guys for watching the videos. I'm NiniFC. This is Blue Lions TV. Signing out.